privacy is about randomness and trust. Can we generate random numbers? Can we distribute random numbers? Can we share them with people we want to communicate? Can we trust devices that generate random numbers? Can we trust ourselves? Can we trust our judgments? It's amazing that we don't have to trust many of those things in order to be able to communicate secretly. So the recent developments in quantum cryptography that in fact go even beyond quantum technology says that never mind devices, they can be produced by your adversary with the most powerful technology. Well, never mind yourself, even if you are a little bit manipulated, that's still okay. As long as we know that at least a tiny fraction of our decisions is our own, is kind of random, is independent of anything pre-existing, then we are done. We can establish secure communication. So privacy, surprisingly, is possible, even if you are surrounded by the most powerful adversaries you can possibly imagine. It turns out that one can come up with protocols for sharing randomness, which are based on those very few assumptions. One is that you have a little bit of free will and then you have access to a certain type of correlations. And then no matter how powerful your adversary might be, with the most superior quantum or even post-quantum technology, you can still keep your secret secret. Is it practical? Difficult to speculate at this point. Technology is there, and it seems that sooner or later it may mature to the level where that kind of cryptography can be implemented. For now, it's a wonderful field to study from a theoretical point of view for mathematicians, computer scientists, cryptographers, physicists, be it on experimental or theory side. Even for philosophers, the issue of free will is something that is really the most essential here. If I have a little bit of free will, I can communicate in a secret way. If I don't have a free will, well, secret communication doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs>